So before we get into this video, I definitely just want to read some of these comments really quickly. And uh, this one by far stood out to me the most. So shout out to Trevor's artwork. He says, uh, my rent went up from $1,300 per month to $2,600 in three years during the Biden administration. Food went up tenfold. Cost of living went up. Money being printed and billions given to other countries caused this. Giving money and housing to illegal immigrants has caused tremendous housing and food stamp shortages for American families in my area. As a social worker, I see poverty on a day on a day-to-day -day basis. What is happening to low-income families and how poor people are being treated by this administration is tragic. Americans deserve better than the options and opportunities they are being given. They are willing to work. They are trying to do better but have literally no opportunity and the funding is definitely going somewhere else. Mainly towards illegal, Im illegal immigration, which is draining the system of any benefits that actual Americans desperately need. You put on the oxygen mask, well, you put the, on the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on others so you can help people in a meaningful and impactful way. Really interesting stuff. Let me know what you guys think about that. And uh, if you ask Kamala one of these questions, she'd fold like Joe Biden's beach hair. Uh, <laughs> beach chair. Sounded like I said beach hair. Um, yeah. And then last one, interviewer trying to interrupt Vance for the 100th time. We're running out of time. Vance. I'll give you more time. So shout out to Jedi JD Vance. Okay, we're here to get into this video, but before we do that, shout out to the King Squad, the King Squad family, and the King Squad elites. You guys are the bomb.com. You guys are awesome. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. And thank you to everyone who donates to the channel, keeps me updated in the emails. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. Nothing is unnoticed and everything is appreciated. I thank you all. And uh, let's get right into this video. I will give my commentary periodically throughout the video, more so on the back end. Let's go. Some of what we heard. Senator J.D. Vance, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having us here in Cincinnati. Let's start off with the Democratic National Convention. Sure. Some of what we heard this past week, Vice President Kamala Harris, in making her case, said that the tariff plans that Donald Trump is proposing will hurt the middle class. Here's what she said specifically, quote, sure. he intends to enact what in effect is a national sales tax, call it a Trump tax, that would raise prices on middle class families by almost $4,000 a year. Now the estimates vary, but how do you respond to that charge that Trump's tariffs would hurt the middle class? Yeah, so if you step back a little bit, Kristen, there's this whole thing that Kamala Harris did at the convention where she made a bunch of claims about what would happen and not enough actually reflection on what already happened, right? Because Donald Trump was already president. He used tariffs to bring manufacturing jobs back to our country, and I think he'll do it again. And he did it while keeping prices extremely low. Because if you go back to the Trump presidency, we had 12,000 factories that were built during Donald Trump. Shout out to OB Vance Kenobi. Trump's presidency, inflation never really ticked above 2%. His entire administration, in fact, was sort of, uh, you know, around 1.5% most of the time that he was president. So when Kamala Harris says, if we do the thing that Trump already did, it's going to be way worse than it was last time, I just don't think that makes a lot of sense. Well, let's talk about uh, sure. Trump's record during his first term. He did, did impose uh, rounds of tariffs, and it cost Americans nearly $80 billion dollars in new taxes, do you acknowledge that imposing more tariffs will ultimately cost consumers? Well, what it really does is it penalizes importers from bringing goods outside the country into the country. And I think that's just a necessary thing. We know that China and a number of other countries are using effectively slave labor to undercut the wages of American workers. Donald Trump thinks that has to stop. And again, what Kamala Harris is saying, Kristen, is that if you do this, you're somehow going to cause skyrocketing inflation. In reality, Donald Trump already did it. He brought a lot of jobs back and it didn't cause inflation. But it caused consumers to pay more. It they paid more in taxes, $80 billion worth. So, Do you acknowledge that consumers ultimately will pay more if there are more tariffs? Imposed? So economists Do you actually, just acknowledge I, that? No, I don't, Kristen, because I think economists really disagree about the effects of tariffs tariffs because there can be a dynamic effect, right? So what, what some economists will say is, is what you just said, that it will actually raise costs for consumers. But what other people say, and I think the record supports what, what this other view, is that it causes this dynamic effect where more jobs come into the country. Anything that you lose on the tariff from the perspective of the consumer, you gain in higher wages. So you're ultimately much better off. You have more take-home pay, you have better jobs, and also we have more reliance. Because one of the things we learned during COVID, I don't, by the the way, blame Democrats for this. But one of the things we learned during COVID, Kristen, is that if our supply chains are really brittle, 
If we depend on the Chinese to make too much of our stuff, then prices can skyrocket at a time of crisis. The economists who say that tariffs are bad, they don't take that into account. And we've all learned it the hard way. And it is economists across the board, really. I mean, the Wall Street Journal says economic data showed that Donald Trump's trade war with China did not achieve its objectives of reversing the declines in U.S. manufacturing or reshoring factory jobs. I hear what you're saying. It's a complicated picture, but just on that bottom line, point. You can't guarantee that Americans won't wind up paying a penny more, can you? Well, I I think that what you can guarantee is that if you don't bring more manufacturing jobs back into this country, you don't make our supply chains more stable, you're going to cause higher prices over the long term. I think that is what is absolutely true. But you acknowledge they could wind up paying more. What I acknowledge, Kristen, is that unless we... Man, I mean, seriously, yo, man, the TDS is through the roof, okay? JD Vance is just shutting her down consistently, consistently, consistently. She's steady trying to lead him into this trap of, uh, you still acknowledge this though, right? And we can get a clip of you saying this so that we can use it against you when you run for president, right? Okay, please, please answer this question. Please, please say what we want you to say so we can use this against you, please. Anything and everything will be used against you, Vance. All right, please, please answer this question. He's over here just like maneuvering it, it through it so, so fluently. Okay, so shout out to JD Vance and uh, for just being on his A game. We bring more manufacturing jobs back to this country. We are going to end up paying more in the long term. Remember the whole promise. Now, again, this was a bipartisan thing. My own party was as wrong about it as Democrats were, and Donald Trump was right about it. What they said is that if you shipped all of our manufacturing to East Asia and to Mexico, Americans would pay lower prices. Well, here we are now, and Americans are paying higher prices. And just one more thing on this, Kristen, because it's really important to go at what what Kamala Harris actually said in her convention speech. She says that she wants to stand up to China on behalf of American workers. If you're not willing to impose tariffs on companies that are manufacturing in China, using slave labor in China, you're not standing up to the Chinese, and Americans are really going to suffer. And on uh, pricing and prices right now, inflation, obviously, at its uh, lowest level since 2021. But let's move on. Robert F. Kennedy, the big news yesterday. Very big news. He suspended his campaign, announced he's endorsing Donald Trump. He is also known as someone who has blamed vaccines for autism, antidepressants for school shootings, and recently said, quote, he won't take sides on what happened on 9-11. Do you have any hesitation about accepting his endorsement? No, Chris and I don't because we're going to disagree on issues, right? There are things that Robert Kennedy has said that I disagree with. I'm sure there are things that he said or that I've said, excuse me, that he's going to disagree with. But I think what his endorsement represents is that Donald J. Trump's Republican Party is a big tent party. I was raised by two grandparents who are sort of classic blue dog Democrats. They believed in having a border. They believed that you know, you shouldn't have censorship in the United States of America. They believed in common sense economic policies. They may have disagreed with Donald Trump about tax policy, but they believed in some fundamental American values. And I think what RFK's endorsement really shows is that the Kennedy Democrats are actually more at home in the Republican Party of Donald Trump. And unfortunately, Kamala Harris's party, higher prices, doing nothing to fight back against the Chinese, to say nothing of a wide open border. That is not JFK's Democratic Party. It's not RFK's Democratic Party. We're thrilled to have the Kennedy Democrats where they belong. Well, and some in the Kennedy family have stepped forward to say that they sharply disagree with this endorsement. But let's just go back very quickly. He says he isn't taking sides on 9-11. Do you agree with that statement? Well, of course I don't agree with that, Chris. And now, to be clear, I don't know what RFK actually said there. Maybe there was additional context. Of course, you actually have to see what people say before you agree or disagree with it. I certainly have taken sides in 9-11. I'm the pro-America side. I don't think that we should have been attacked. And I certainly think hitting back against the terrorists was justified. I don't know what RFK said there. But what I do know is that RFK said a lot of very interesting and important things, that the Democratic Party has become too pro-censorship, that the Democratic Party, especially in the wake of COVID, became really anti-freedom and anti-child. I mean, you had Democrats saying that we should be masking toddlers in their schools, even though we knew it caused developmental disabilities. I agree with RFK that that was crazy. Well, to be fair, there was a lot of information that scientists were grappling with as it came in and masks were perceived to Kristen, stop total, the spread of the disease. To, to, Let's move on. Totally, though. totally fair. Yeah. But the one thing before we move on that I would say on that is there were imp- Wow. Wow. You're, you're making too much sense, Vance. All right. All right, all right. You, you didn't give us the you didn't give us the answer that we were looking for. OK, you didn't will fall into our trap. Congratulations, Mr. Vance. You won this one. Let's get you with the next trap. All right. Uh, can we move on to the next question? You're, you're just too much logic, too much common sense. All right. Come on, Vance, please. 
<laughs> that, that's that's the translation of what Kristen Welker is saying. All right, that's the translation. It's it's ridiculous. I mean, look at this. Where, where where's it at? Right here. If we can get it. I mean, the TDS is through the roof. I mean, just just deer in headlights, but like aggressively, just firing off. Like this is not the you know we're right, we can go on for days. She she's the, the TDS is through the roof. That masks help to stop the spread of the disease. Let's talk also about another big issue. Abilities for toddlers, well, right? We have to be able to balance this stuff. And I think the way that RFK struck that balance yeah. was much smarter, Let, unfortunately, than the way that Kamala Harris did. Let's talk about a, another big issue that was talked about at the Democratic National Convention. It's being talked about on the campaign trail abortion. Sure. Democrats made the case this week and beyond this week that Donald Trump, if elected, will impose a federal ban on abortion if he wins. Now, Donald Trump says he won't, but can you commit, Senator, sitting right here with me today, that if you and Donald Trump are elected, that you will not impose a federal ban on abortion? I can absolutely commit that, Kristen, and Donald Trump has been as clear about that as possible. I, I think it's important to step back and say, what has Donald Trump actually said on the abortion question, and how is it different from what Kamala Harris and the Democrats have said? Donald Trump wants to end this culture war over this particular topic. If Kamala, excuse me, if California wants to have a different abortion policy from Ohio, then Ohio has to respect California, and California has to respect Ohio. Donald Trump's view is that we want the individual states and their individual cultures and their unique political sensibilities to make these decisions because we don't want to have a nonstop federal conflict over this issue, the federal government ought to be focused on getting food prices down, getting housing prices down, issues, of course, where Kamala Harris has been a total disaster. So I think Donald Trump is right. We want the federal government to focus on these big economic and immigration questions. Let the states figure out their own abortion policy. Let me just follow up with you a little bit on that point, because I've been talking to Republicans, including Senator Lindsey Graham just last week, who've made it very clear that if Donald Trump is elected, if you are elected, they will continue to press this point. Senator Graham said to me, I'm going to keep saying that there should be a federal ban. If such a piece of legislation landed on Donald Trump's desk, would he veto it? Well, I think it'd be very clear he would not support it. I mean, he but said would he that veto explicitly. It? Yeah, I, th I mean, if you're not supporting it as the president of the United States, you fundamentally so have to veto, veto it. So he would veto a federal abortion ban? I think he would. He said that explicitly that he would. And, and I don't again, think Lindsay, he's ever Lindsay, said explicitly Lindsay, he would. He Lindsay said Graham, that to you? Lindsay Graham, Kristen. Uh, I, I Get these activists out of here, man. You know, I, I see this one consistent comment in my comment section, and uh, you guys are saying that journalism is dead. What do you think about that? Comment down below, okay? Let me know if you agree with that, all right? Do you think that these journalists are not journalists and they're actually activists? What do you think about that, okay? I, I personally think that they are giving activists a platform to fight logic, fight common sense, and uh, fight the Republican Party, okay? They absolutely cannot stand Trump. Um, you know, they, they just want to ruin the guy, you know? And that, that's that's obvious. We all know that. Let me know what you guys think down below, okay? Do you think Kristen Welker is an activist? Let me know what you guys think. I think so, personally. I would be surprised. I mean, again, I need to see the context on what Lindsey Graham said because Lindsey Graham himself has not advocated a federal abortion ban. Lindsey Graham has advocated federal a, fe a federal ban. minimum standard. Now, to be clear, that is not Donald Trump's view. Donald Trump disagrees with Lindsey Graham on this, but no Republican, at least no Republican within with any reasonable power, is saying that we should have a complete national abortion ban. I haven't heard that from any of my colleagues. And to be clear, Donald Trump, I think, has staked his position and made it very explicit. He wants this to be a state decision. States are going to make this determination themselves. All right, let's talk about women voters more broadly. The Census Bureau estimates there are 22 million women between the ages of 20 and 40 who, for whatever reason, do not have children. What do you say to those women who hear some of your comments? For whatever reason, the reason is obvious. The reason is the question you just asked. I mean, seriously, you're literally like, like a walking contradiction you're literally a breathing contradiction okay uh, uh what is the issue with uh women not having children i mean well i mean the same individuals fighting to delete their whole families you know and then you wonder why they're not having kids like that i mean it's it's common sense college i mean what like seriously it's the answer's in your face <laughs>
comments, including the childless cat lady comments, which you've been asked about, but who feel as though you won't represent them. Well, I'd say, first of all, I will represent you. I want to be the vice president for the whole country, and I want to represent everybody. Exactly. And yes, I made a sarcastic comment years ago that I think that a lot of Democrats have willfully misinterpreted. But what I've simply said is that I, I think that it's really a profound change that's happened in our country, where we become anti-family, and I would like to change yep. that. And I think yep. if you talk to young women, whether they have children or don't want, want to have children, uh, what you consistently hear is that a lot of young women feel like they don't have options. I saw this with my own wife, who's a working mother, who's a very, very accomplished litigator. She has three beautiful kids and always felt like she was having to balance being a good mom with being the kind of litigator that she wanted to be. I just want women to have more choices. I've seen that very personally in my own family, and I think it's something that is broken about our country. Let me zoom out a little bit. Then. You're calling it a sarcastic comment, sure. and yet some women, and you got the feedback in real time, felt like it was a gut punch to them personally. Do you regret making that comment? Look, I regret certainly that a lot of people took it the wrong way, and I certainly regret that the DNC and, and Kamala Harris lied about it. But do it. you but regret look, what you said, Senator? Look, Kristen, I'm going to say things from time to time that people disagree with. I'm a real person. I'm going to make jokes. I'm going to say things Great sarcastically. Answer. And I think that what's important is that we focus on the policy. There is certainly... I think that's a brilliant answer right there because when they take this, when they pull this interview up four years from now, and it's 2028, and he and J.D. Vance, say, say J.D. Vance runs for president, and they try to say, look, look, look. Look, J.D. Vance said this right here. You know, his answer was perfect. I'm, I'm going to say things that people do not agree with. All right. It's just a part of the game. You know, that's kind of something you just got to chalk up to the game and, and call it a day. But, uh, yeah, I think that was a great answer longevity wise because they will. Everything you say and everything you do will be used against you. It's just what it is. That's how they operate. And that is politics. going to be things that I say well, if I the political arena, that is. I'm elected vice president. People are going to say, well, I wish he had said that differently. I think it's most important to actually be the person I actually am and to say those sarcastic comments were made in the service of a real substantive point. This country has become too anti-family. It's too expensive to afford a house. It's too expensive yeah. to afford groceries. Donald Trump and I want to change that. And unless we get better leadership, we're not going to. But, but again, just very quickly. Given that people have told you directly, have spoken out, have said that they were offended, they were hurt by those comments, do you wish you never made those childless cat lady comments? I think that it's much more important for me to just be a normal human being who sometimes says so things no that people disagree with. I have a lot of regrets, Kristen, but making a joke three years ago is not at the top 10 of the list. All right. Another big topic in this race is immigration. There has been a lot of discussion about Donald Trump's plans for mass deportation. Yeah. According to one estimate, more than 11 million U.S. citizens live in households with mixed immigration status, including more than 5 million children. If you and former President Trump were elected, would you separate families as a part of your mass deportation effort? Well, we have to start with the foundational issue here, which is we have 25 million illegal aliens in this country right now because Kamala Harris I, has refused to do her job. I have, very I, I quickly, do, DHS says it's much lower. It's closer to 8 million. I, think I don't know. Where I, do you get I, the 25 think, million from? Well, I think the 25 million are the people that should have been deported that maybe weren't deported. Plus, you had another 12 to 15 million okay. that have come in since Kamala Harris. What, what, look, DHS whatever the number is. that number for the record. They say it's fair, closer to eight to ten million but, but i think there are reasons to man oh my gosh i would hate to have to sit down and like talk to her and actually work with her i mean it, she just seems very like difficult um yeah so right here you know it, it, she's just refusing to uh look at the fact that kamala really screwed up you know i i was i was really tempted to say do you and i'm and you know what i'm going to say it do you regret voting for a ku klux kamala do you well not voting nobody voted for ku klux kamala matter of fact but do you regret uh voting for the biden harris administration do you, how have they affected you Kristen? all right do you do you live in america do you realize how how uh, badly affected everybody is due to due to the person that you support i mean it's just it's just nuts how how do they not see the flaws in their own stuff? You know, like shout out to Vance. I'm listening to him. And one of the things that stuck out to me was, you know, he said, you know, I'm going to say things people don't like, you know, I, 
it is what it is. It's a, it's a part of the game. And, and he, he's over here admitting to, okay, he could have worded things better and stuff like that and uh, saying he's not perfect. I can appreciate that. But as Kristen Welker, on, Welker on, the, on the other hand, is acting like, her, you know, her party's perfect. They got all their facts together and they don't even believe in facts. And they are, you know, definitely not perfect. Okay. So I just, I just find it very, you know, contradictory and hypocritical. That, I just, that's all I had to say. Let's get back to it. I think that DHS is underestimating whatever the real number is, it's way too high, right? It's millions upon millions of illegal immigrants that have come in just since Kamala Harris became the border czar a few years ago. The she first was put thing, in charge of the root causes of migration. She, well, the root causes of migration, I would say, Kristen, is that Kamala Harris refuses to do her job as border czar. And let's just start there. I want to answer your question, but I think it's important to sort of se sequence this in the right way. So if you want to get control of the Ill Ill illegal immigration problem, you have to stop the bleeding. You have to stop so many people from coming here illegally in the first place. And that means undoing everything that Kamala Harris did practically on day one of the administration. You have to reimpose deportations. You have to stop catch and release. Stop granting asylum to every single person who comes in here and says that they need asylum. And stop granting mass parole. These policies are why we have the immigration crisis that we have. So I think focus on fixing the problem. Before we even fix the problem, we've got to stop the problem from getting worse. And as you know, President Biden passed a series of executive actions and illegal border crossings are now at their lowest levels in about five years. So much so that Greg Abbott is no longer Busing so, people so to other cities. But I, let me I, ask no, 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 this, this is, fundamental question. Please. Center. Fundamental question. Man, man. Like she just like suck, she just sucker punches you and then says, but 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 but, but let me ask you this next question. She's <laughs> wild. Will families be separated under your mass deportation? And again, because you made a point here. Whoa, you did not just act like you care about families. Will families be deleted by Ku Klux Kamala's uh, policies? Um, yes. Sending them off to war, deleting their kids. All right. So much so that we need the immigrants. All right. We're not we're not getting married out here like that. We're not starting families like that. A lot of Gen, especially Gen Z is a lot of Gen Z is failing to launch, you know, and take flight in society. So they need these immigrants because of the damage they have done. All right. It's just what it is. And then, all and, you know. The immigrants, they don't know that these people are anti-family and all that kind of stuff. They'll find out too, all right? And and they'll their whole family will will go kaboom as well. But um, you know, that's a whole other conversation. But uh yeah, to to sit here and act like she cares about families is just diabolical. It's just disgusting to me cuz I I know what the Dems stand for. We know what the Dems support. Okay? So it's just ridiculous. Here, I do want to answer this question about families and about deportations, but you made this point that border crossings are lower. Border crossings at the southern border are lower because the Harris administration is sending more immigrants through the ports of entry. So instead of coming through the southern border, they're now being flown at taxpayer expense to the ports of entry all over our country. The number of illegal crossings, Chris, and this is a really important point, they're not any lower. They're just shuffling how the people well, are coming into the country the, in the first place. And this is very important. They're now, able to about process them more efficiently, but, but Greg Abbott's not but setting I them to other Kristen, states. Kristen, I don't but want just, a border czar just, who makes it more efficient for illegal immigrants to come into this country. This That's question, why we have the problem that we have. Senator, to this question, because so many people want to know. She refuses to accept the truth. She she is anti common sense, anti logic, and she's really trying to give uh, Jedi JD Vance hell, and he's really doing an excellent job of staying in the ring with this chick. So, uh, with this socialist, with this communist right here on the screen here. Um, so shout out to JD, uh, JD Vance because none of this is pleasant. All of this is frustrating, um, especially you know. When you're trying to, when you're bring, when you're bringing logic to the table with someone who is just all about foolishness, it's it's frustrating. So, shout out to JD Vance for really doing an excellent job of maintaining himself throughout this interview. Know the answer to this: Will Please. families borders are just, who makes it more efficient for illegal immigrants to come into this country? This That's question, why we have the problem that we have. Senator, to this question, because so many people want to know the answer to this: Will Please. families be separated under your mass deportation policy? I think that families are currently being separated, and you're certainly going to have to deport some people in this country. Now, I think you so start. That's a yes. with the, no, I think it's you start with the most violent criminals in our country. Those people need to be. Deported. That's where you focus federal resources. I think you, of course, have a number of children 
who are currently living with drug cartel members, not actually their families. We need to, of course, find their families and get them back to their families. But it's, it's very interesting here because what Kamala Harris says is that Donald Trump wants to separate families. Kamala Harris's policies have led to thousands upon thousands of migrant children living with sex traffickers and drug but, cartels. Well, that is the consequence of her policies. But there's not Some a policy to missing. separate families. There's not a policy to separate families. Oh, if, the question if you is, know that your policies but, will lead to family separation, you, you don't get to claim. Kristen, this but, is important. Wait, wait, Kamala on, Harris cannot on. claim that she doesn't know that her policies are the, leading to family separation. They are, and everybody knows it, yep. and she has to take responsibility are, for that. That's what real leadership there is. Are some some families who have been separated, as you say, some because their parents are criminals. But of course, under the Trump administration, there was a zero tolerance policy, which is an actual policy. But, but let's move on. No, no, please. Can, we're can running I just out make this point, Kristen? Because th- this is so important. We are running out there of time. There was a zero. Point. I'll give you more time. There was a zero, <laughs> okay. zero tolerance policy during the Love Trump it. administration. And that led to less family separation than under Kamala Harris's border policies. That's what's so striking about this. Actually enforcing our border is the most humane thing for children and certain Certainly for American citizens. But I don't hear you denying that families will be separated. Let's move on to something that Donald Trump sure. said in North Carolina and uh, yet again Friday night. He said, quote, our primary focus is not to get out the vote. It's to make sure they don't cheat because we have all the votes you need. You can see it. Why is Donald Trump casting doubt on the election before it's even happened. I don't think that's what Donald Trump is doing. Well, that's what he's doing. That's what he says here. We need to make sure they don't cheat. I think that what he's saying is that we want to pursue a set of policies in the Republican. And we know they are cheating at that. So it's just nuts. Republican Party that make it easier for every legal ballot to be cast and counted, but make it harder for illegally cast ballots to be counted. Now, we can disagree about how many of those there are, whether there are a few hundred, a few thousand, maybe more. But, but just in the last week, OK, so just in the last week, once in Arizona and once in Pennsylvania, there were major court wins that make our ballot process more secure and more effective. I think that's what Donald Trump is talking about, is we have to pursue, sometimes through litigation, sometimes through better policy at the state or national level, a set of rules that make sure every ballot is legally counted. Well, it's very different from your message, which is we, you said, and I'll quote you back to yourself, we have to work as hard as possible to persuade Americans to vote for us. Are you on the same page as Donald Trump? Because again, <laughs> he seems to be casting doubt of course, on the results of, of the election before it's even happened. Of course we're on the same page, Krista. We talk all the time. And I guarantee you, if you sat here and said, Mr. President, D- Donald Trump, do you believe that we need to do, that your campaign needs to persuade voters as much as possible? Of course he's going to say yes. That's not inconsistent with thinking that we need to pursue a set of approaches that make sure legal ballots get counted, illegal ballots don't get counted. Do you have faith that the 2024 election will be free and fair? I do, Kristen. I do think it's going to be free and fair, and we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that happens. We're going to pursue every pathway to make sure, again, legal ballots get counted. Um, But I, I feel very good about where we are. I think we're going to win this race, and I think we're going to win it in a very good election. All right. Senator J.D. Vance, Thanks, Chris. thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Likewise. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you so much trans- translates into I can't stand you. I can't stand your freaking guts. That's that's what that translated into uh, in liberal Lanese. Um, Yeah, I tell you, she gave J.D. Vance hell. That was that was difficult to watch. That was difficult to listen to her voice and listen to her spew out venom, poison, you know, falsehoods and uh, lies and sit here and attack his logic. OK, I, I just I'm like, man, he's giving you these answering your questions. You don't like the answer. So you skip the question and go to the next one. Um, you know, you don't want to, uh, you know, address when he's on, on you like white on rice, when he's telling you the truth. They don't want to address that. And it's very frustrating. You know, I think J.D. Vance does an excellent job of maintaining, you know, his composure, his demeanor, um, while accurately breaking down uh, his answers to her uh, reprehensible questions. And that's my thoughts. You know, and uh, that's that. I think that Kristen Welker is an agent of Satan and then uh, (laughs) and um, is straight, you know. Straight, uh, uh, just uh, anti common sense, woke liberal, you know, raging liberal. I mean, it's just typical. Uh, that's that.
let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. What, what do you think about this interview? How do, how do you feel about how they handled each other and um, all that kind of stuff? Okay, what were your thoughts on this? And uh, I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. Shout out to the Kane Squad, the Kane Squad family, and the Kane Squad at least. You guys are the bottom.com. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you to everyone who left a positive comment. And uh, that's that. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Trump 2024.